this is a full review with the all new generation of the BMW Z4. And we will solve the question, four cylinder 30i or six cylinder M40i. In general, exterior, interior and the driving experience, agile driving, some high speed motorway driving in Germany today with closed top and of course open top cruising. Please join us in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. So here in the front, also big change in design for the new Z4. By the way, I always say Z4 because the German pronunciation would be Z4, so Z4 would come close to it. You know, some say Z4, but I'm pretty certain that it's rather Z4. That's also what BMW says, by the way. Wide front double kidney here, also with this pin design. You can get different frames here. You can get this black shadow line, but there's also chrome or a silver available, so you have a, some choice there. This one's the M Sport model, so design was it comes close to the M40i if you get the base model. The lower area looks a little bit different. There's a little bit less vehicle color than in the lower area. Headlamps come standard with LED, but optional, you can go for the adaptive LED lamps. So they are a little bit more high trim than that, but you always get this daytime running light here in the top part. The hood, is split right there and the color for today is San Francisco red a very interesting red with you know some different nuances in there what do you think about this new styling here of the Z4 and did you realize just from the front track it's 10 centimeters wider now in this new generation would you have seen it from design well it's the case and in the rear by the way six centimeters wider so it's really more massive than before the new Z4 has also gained 9 cm in length, now at 4 m 32, 14 foot 1 or 170 inches. Very interesting because the design, especially here through this longer rear overhang, has changed if you compare it to the predecessor generation. Then the 17 to 19 inch wheels, those ones are the top one, 19 inch in black. Those air breathers here, they're in this case really open, not only design element, they change it from time to time. Sometimes it's you know working, sometimes it's all closed and just fake. Then you can see two design lines, one of the top part here, one in the lower part, raising a little bit to the rear. And what's also very interesting is that this one here is built in Austria at Magna Steyr. So that's like you know, a special production company who serves different manufacturers together with the Toyota Supra, which would be the coupe version of this one here. But you can see from everything that's done, those cars are mainly BMW, and especially here, the Z4, you can hardly see anything Toyota, uh, you know, which, which would be Toyota for this vehicle. Weight band is also quite good, 50-50 approximately. And this car is still quite low in weight, although if you compare it to the predecessor, first of all, they saved about 40 kilograms because they went for a soft top now instead of a hard top. But then again, the overall weight is still 10 kilograms more because of all the new technology, and, you know, all the electronics you need as well and suspension and so on. But that's overall quite normal. However, if you go for a four cylinder, you will save 150 kilograms in weight and in comparison to a six cylinder. That's also very interesting. And by the way, when you hold this key here, you can also close the roof. So I'll leave a free picture right now. It takes about 10 seconds and you can do it up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour also while driving, that's possible. And this fabric here from the roof is available in black 
and gray. So those options you have. I think the gray one also works quite well. That looks pretty fancy. You can also check it out in our other video. And the same way, if you hold the opening button, then you can see here, you can also do it all the way back again. And now to the rear, which is, you know, pretty neatly designed, just very little design lines. Very interesting also the side look right there, quite sculptural. These tail lamps here, they are more horizontally drawn, more modern design overall. And those here are real exhaust pipes indeed. And you can also see there's a valve in there, a special one to boost up the sound even. And very interesting also this cut in right there. But in this case, again, those are some fake um, just visual as an element this has nothing to do with any air in or outtake or whatsoever so what do you say about the overall styling of this new generation guys and then lineup starts with a two liter four cylinder the 20i in europe with about 200 horsepower, 6.6 .6 seconds is the acceleration to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour and starts below 50k in price then you already pay about 5,000 euros more or also about 50,000 US dollars in US for the base engine for the US. This one then will be the 30i. This one here today, two liter four cylinder, same block, but then 258 horsepower and about the second fast in the acceleration, 5.4 seconds. And then you pay yeah, over 60k, so about 12,000 euros or dollars more for the M40i, then with a 3 liter R6 or inline six cylinder, 340 horsepower, and even a second fasten, 4.5 seconds is the acceleration figure. Yeah, so more price, more horsepower. The question is, is the four cylinder enough actually in the acceleration? We'll find out for you. Now join me on the interior here, top side also soft materials, then the Hofmeister Knick or Kink in, in English, so Knick in German, Kink in English, the design element taken over from past BMW Coupés, then an optional sound system which has really decent sound like that, M entry badge, this one here is the M Sport model, and the steering wheel, it's the M steering wheel, also with a sport yeah, touch. Left side here for the cruise control, right side for voice input or for the volume. Then no seats. There are two seats available, normal sport seat and an M sport seat, but they are not too different. They both basically have the same form. Just a little bit here you know, from the stitching area here is different. And the good thing is the customers in US can buy a full sensor tech option. In Germany, for example, we cannot get that. Mostly also this one here is animal skin. There is one seat option which has some Alcantara and then animal skin mixed. That would be next best one also for the climate comfort. But since when this one is built in Austria, you should also just ask even in Europe if you can get the sensor tech seat then to be a little bit more animal friendly. But the design of the seat overall looks really cool. But are they also comfortable? For getting inside this vehicle, it's important to know what happens when the roof is actually closed. So I'm one means 86 or six foot one. And when the roof is closed, that still leaves me some headroom. And wait a minute, not even all the way down with the seat here. So when I'm going all the way down with the seat, 
even more headroom. But you can see the seat um, itself, you know, it leans a little bit backward then when you put it all the way down. So it's actually better for the comfort when you push it a little bit up, then you sit a little bit more upright. That's better than for the overall driving comfort. And since I have some more headroom left, that's also actually possible. And those sport seats here, and you know, roads in general, they're totally fine for most people which are a little bit smaller than me but for tall people most rotors are not that comfortable here it's a little bit different they worked on that on the new generation here and this one here definitely offers more comfort than the previous generation and also than you know most of the competitors that's very interesting and so especially when i put it a little bit up so the seating area is a little bit more upright and drive like this i so far did not get any back pain and that's a really good thing for all smaller roadster the interior overview here since this is a roadster a little bit different today again this is the real cockpit perspective the screens 10.25 inch each left and right both digital both with newest iteration of the bmw system soon more details to that then you can still see the climate unit can be somewhat controlled manually the volume knob is still there you can turn that one and in the lower area you have an inductive charging pad for the smartphone and the usb supply then the shifting lever you can see here automatic shifting lever this is quite well placed also start stop engine mode and then there's this turning pressing knob that you can control the infotainment system while driving a little bit better but you can also do it with touch now i'll soon show you that and then we also have a middle console that flips up very nice build quality with the USB-C port then in there and cup holders. The full potential of the instruments you can only see when turning on the engine actually and you can see here the revs go up counterclockwise. Yeah at first we said Sacri Lake in every vehicle but actually you get used to it for a while and then in the middle for example there's then space left for the infotainment system which then also can display some GPS info so that's actually a gain then. You can also order a head-up display with the allowed speed, current speed and also some GPS info, so that's a very helpful option too. Here in the new iteration of the infotainment system, you can control it by touch, so that's cool actually, but you can also control it still with the lower turning and pressing knob, so while driving, that's for example helpful here with the GPS. You can also have the map hotkey for example, and you can see you can zoom in and out quite easily, so that's um, you know a good CPU also here like that and what's also cool are those special gauges for example there's this uh, sport displays for example where you can see the g-force that's quite nice phone connection by the way either we have bluetooth or wireless carplay is available but sometimes i think it's a little bit complicated because you always have to go like mobile devices and then have to go to settings you have to activate the apple carplay and so on so it takes a while after you find that you can really use that also but then it's once connected with the wireless carplay and then it's also fine especially if the connection then down there with the wireless charging too but no android auto still from bmw oh and here we have the rear view camera with a nice resolution indeed and you can see also the helping lines they go according on how you turn the steering wheel and you can either press this button here at the steering wheel or say hey bmw Hello, what can I help you with? Please drive me to Berlin. All right, our next destination is Berlin. So for example, for GPS put, input, it works quite well. Or you can also, for example, do it with the um, AC. There is another speaker from this optional Harman Kardon sound system. Yeah, it's cost intensive, but if you like music, that might make sense. Really gives a nice sound for this Roadster. Nicely, by the way, that also all of the dashboard is all soft touch. So they really have stepped up the build quality. One of the best build quality in the Roadster at the moment overall. And thank you BMW, by the way, for making the roof closing and opening mechanism in the logical order. So you pull it to open it and you push it to close it. Yeah. That's normal, you think? Yeah, it is, totally. But we have seen other manufacturers who did it all the way around. And of course, this one here is the right way to go. Oh, and then there's also ISOFIX possibility here on the co-driver seat, interesting. And then you can store something behind the seats with this net. And then you can open this one here. And when you also open it at the other side from the trunk, you can load through longer things. 
The roll bars always stand up, by the way, as you can see here, and then in the middle of that you can get a small wind deflector. I strongly recommend that. And now this trunk area, which is at 281 liters, and the interesting thing is that here in the very front area it's a little bit more than one meters wide, and then in the back area it's a little bit less than one meters, and the length, overall length, is about 80 centimeters. That's still quite decent, and the height is not influenced by the soft top, so it always stays at yeah, about 36 centimeters, and that's a big step forward if you compare it to the previous generation. 50% increase actually, so a cabin trolley like this you could put in that way. Also another one next to it. Upright it's not possible, but you can see for two people for the weekend that's totally fine, or maybe also for a week of holiday with like two suitcases, another backpack or something. So yeah, I mean, this is still a roadster, I have to be <laughs> reminded of that, but I think that's totally fine, especially if they are using the soft top, then again this reaching through, through the middle cabin is also possible. So I think you are also quite fine with that. So what about that launch control here? We put it in sport, then we put the traction control, the dynamic protection, dynamic traction control, so that's not easy off, but drawn back. And we put it to this manual mode, the shifting lever to the left side. And also steer just a little bit, and then we can also see how stable the car and how controllable it still stays with that launch control. Hitting now the brake with my left foot all the way through, and then I'll push my right foot all the way through the throttle. That was just 100 kilometers an hour. Wow, very nice. And have you realized how smooth that launch control went actually? So I was very well in control also of the vehicle. So I think quite well done. Yeah, I think, you know, with the M40i, with the launch control there, we definitely felt the difference. Um, I had some, you know, quite some uh, struggle to activate the launch control last time, by the way. Mm, it always depends on, the car does not always want to do that. Sometimes the car tells you, yeah, you know, I'm not really ready for that. Um, maybe because of temperature or whatever, all other factors play a role than there. Um, yeah. So this time it immediately worked, so it always depends on. And when I'm going back to the comfort mode, also the start-stop, by the way, is being activated, which I'm not a fan of, of the start-stop functions. I think it's not good for the engine, Well, I, that's not my opinion. We did uh, talk about it with engineers. And when you're in the sports mode, that doesn't happen. And also you can activate it intentionally with a button right there. So it only saves fuel on paper for the manufacturers for their fleet consumption, but not really that much for the customers. So, and from this harsh acceleration, really cool, you can go back to cruising with the open top and just really enjoy that vehicle. And that's really very cool with this car. You can do both. You can have some comfortable cruising and you can have some great speed. Well, and now we're gonna go up the hill, some handling. Also in the sports mode. And you hear more plop from the exhaust, definitely. The steering is a little bit stiffer, but overall the steering is very soft, even in the sports mode. It gives me some of the direct and nice go-kart handling, yes, but it's not the most natural steering feeling. But overall, this car is very well to control. So look at those steering commands here. It very well responds to what I'm doing. Also, the you know, slight oversteer them from this rear-wheel drive really gives me good accelerating out of the corners. If I'm really accelerating it, there would also be the rear differential lock optional. Wow, very nice. Nice. Can also go to the you know, sports traction mode, that would also be possible. So in this case, like at the other corner, it you know, decelerated me a little bit here now when I have it off, a little bit more play, but still such a good traction from the car. Wow, that's really a lot of fun to drive it in an agile way.
So guys, what about close top, high speed, motorway? Let's put it to the sports mode. And also the gears are turned up higher, you, higher you um, hear me more from the exhaust. So, let's see if we can safely enter the motorway. Yeah, we'll let those two cars pass and then we get on the motorway. And let's really now accelerate it out. Uh, we'll let one more car pass to be really safe. Now we're going from like 20 kilometers, like whatever. That's 200 kilometers or 125 miles per hour. Pretty decent as for the acceleration. So, and of course now it gets somewhat loud in here, although we have the close top. But that's no wonder with the convertible overall at those speeds. Now the brakes. Oh yeah, that's good because the car is not heavy in weight. Therefore the brakes are also working very well. Nice, nice, nice. So you don't need much more power I would say so uh, the M40i is of course more powerful as for, as for the acceleration yes and still this one here you see since you have 150 kilograms less in weight with the four cylinder also performs very well as for that nice and now driving with closed top and let's see oh, you think I need some AC now when I have the uh, top closed um, you have to go to the AC menu to activate the AC or deactivate again. That's not such a good thing, I think. So, now at 80 km an hour, let me set the cruise control. I think it's actually quite decent as for noise insulation. They also work on that here in the new generation. So, we'll soon also drive on the motorway with 100 km an hour and open top. Um, see how that one plays out, but here at 80 with closed tops, it's actually quite decent, quite silent, not much wind noise anywhere, so that could be a solution that you would go longer motorway runs, for example, with the closed top, then countryside and so on, when you really can enjoy everything, then you would go with the open top, of course. Here on the tunnel, you can also check it out, how it looks here like, when you have everything illuminated. They have some ambient lighting in the lower areas, but not so much ambient lighting play here overall. Nice to see the digital gauges here also at night, so to say. And the car gives me also a very stable feeling here on the motorway. Very decent, I like that. So there's always the question, can you use roadsters for the motorway for longer runs? And, mm, you know, quite a lot of times I would say no. But in this case, that would be one of the very rare cars where I can do that. Now at 100 km an hour, and again, sound insulation is very well done. That's, that's pretty cool. We are also very low on the road, so the wind can flow over us, to say. But they really worked on that, that they have less wind noise and so on. And I think that, that really works. Here again, even if you're wow, <laughs> at 100 and do some lane change or something, that's really so cool. Look at that reaction from the vehicle. So also at higher speeds, it stays go-kart alike. Really like that. Wow. Yeah, so I think testing with close top and the acceleration test also performed quite well. Again, I would like also you guys to compare it with the other review, the M40i, our initial review, which we tested in Portugal at the, at the model launch. And you know, I have my experience here today with uh, six cylinder versus four cylinder and I would really like you guys also to comment if you would have the possibility, if you would buy this car here, which one would you go for? And also considering the extra price you have to pay for the six cylinder, I would really be you know, interested in that. And now one more acceleration for you guys, because what happens if we have already picked up speed and then we want to go further? Does that still work with the four cylinder here? So we are now already at 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles, yeah, 65 miles an hour. We can also use the shifting pedals here to go back some gears earlier and then hammer it. Let's go.
that's 200 again kilometers and yeah I think you now realized if I would have done this with the six cylinder that would make a difference so in the lower speed areas the four cylinder doesn't have a big disadvantage but when you then get to the higher speed areas then those you know this displacement figure and so on and the newton meters that will make a difference and then yeah maybe for german customers this is can be relevant when you do some motorway runs but again for most other customers this will not be that relevant then because if you for example imagine our friends in the us where can you drive that fast anyway in the us so um i think it's that's really good to know still you know talking about a really high level this was still a decent acceleration and again never forget that this vehicle here is definitely lighter than the six cylinder and i somehow feel you also somehow you know feel it when driving the car so it still ha still handles very very well and i mean had this one here also with the adaptive suspension it's basically the same up as a six cylinder and maybe this one here handles even a little bit better And now to some city driving and the thing is here with the four cylinder you can be super silent so it's more neighbor proof so to say at least if you like your neighbors so if you're just rolling it or giving it a little throttle it is very very silent and the m40i with the six cylinder will always be a little bit more sonorous from the sound but here really you hardly hear anything when you just let it roll here, especially for example in the Eco Pro or, or Comfort mode. So that's that's really astonishing and it has such a smooth driving feeling. Remember we also have the adaptive suspension here and so it's very comfortable also in the normal Comfort or in the Eco mode. Steering here is very very soft for city driving so you do feel a difference when you're for example in the sport mode it's a little bit stiffer than as for the reaction and the exhaust also comes to life so there's a big difference also from the exhaust sound from the comfort to the sports mode difference in the suspension and of course you know in how the gears are being turned up and so on so in the eco pro mode you can really save some fuel that's possible and if you just let it roll it really can score some you know very low consumption figures um, if you want and if you drive this car very calmly you can go for some seven liters on one kilometers that's 34 mpg us or 41 mpg uk at the moment i was you know driving it very very calmly i'm even a little bit better in fuel consumption and of course, if you hit it a little bit harder and drive sportier, like we've dri driven it earlier, then the fuel consumption will go up. So you can really um, fine tune that yourself. But it's always good to have somewhat like a minimum fuel consumption to really see what this car is theoretically capable of. And that's really good. And one of the reasons of, for that is, of course, the low weight, especially here for this four cylinder Roadster. And this low weight always gives you a little bit more purest experience. You somewhat feel that on the front axle it's a little bit lighter than the um, M40i, although this one definitely has more power. For most use cases, especially here in the city when you have a lot of stop and go and so on, the four cylinder will just do fine. You know, I wouldn't really say that the M40i feels super much sportier overall. It is better in the acceleration, yes, and the sound is more sonorous. However, you already heard it earlier when you put the sport mode in here then this one also you know gives you a sound experience you can so to say have both here in city traffic it's also very important to have a good overview and to side mirrors it's actually fine also just to you know to the rear i can watch through that wind deflector right there that's actually quite okay there's a long hood but still you know that's the good thing about having a small vehicle you still have a decent overview about you know what's what's going on around you and you al almost see where the car is ending at least if you're tall enough a little bit to um, you know to see it so it's a very easy handling in the city 
also again due to its compact sizes. Is it any bad that the car is longer than before? Well, um, yeah, you know, the previous generations they were definitely a little bit smaller, but this one here, as they upgrade the suspension and also, especially the comfort, you know, I think it's very good that they have more comfortable seat forms overall. So, I would always go for this generation here for the pure reason that you get less back pain in this one here than you would do in the previous generations at least if you're a little bit taller. Again, quite convinced also about this... Oh, there's a right side blocked. Pretty convinced um, about this suspension because it really gives you decent comfort here also in the city. And if you, for example, think about some competitors, yeah, I mean, the one that would closest come to that would be the Audi TT, I think, because that one is also, you know, somewhat still comfortable. Uh, but only, you know, in, yeah, it depends really on, on your, oh, this. I always let emergency vehicles pass, even if they don't have the light on. They gotta work, oh, yeah. well, I'm working too, but, you know, they probably have some more um, urgent work to do than I do here at the moment. So back to our review, back to our work. So, will I really go here for the six-cylinder or four-cylinder? Hmm. Yeah, I think it really depends on pricing and um, I'll soon come back to, to that part in the final conclusion because it really depends on which extras you pick and also how much money you have available. But as for power and as for calm driving and cruising, this one here, the four-cylinder, is definitely sufficient, definitely enough. Really just having fun, you know, also cruising this vehicle is really cool and usually those small roads are sporty but not that comfortable. So also if you compare it for example to a 718 Boxster. 718 Boxster is a great track car, also so well balanced in handling because of the midship engine concept which you have in the Boxster, not here of course, here the engine in the front. But then again the Boxster lacks comfort especially for tall people. So. This one here is, to me, at the moment, the most comfortable roadster. If you want more comfort driving an open-top car, so driving convertible, then you would need to go to the segment of the mid-size convertibles, like a Mercedes C-Class, a BMW 4 Series, or a Audi A5 convertible, which I also, I really like that segment, you know, because it offers you comfort. It's still somewhat agile, sporty driving fun, at the same time, we recently had a discussion also what about those big convertibles like an E-Class convertible or like an S-Class convertible or this 8-series convertible. Mm, they don't have so much more space, although they are so long on the exterior. And, you know, they are already quite bulky and not that agile to drive. So my favorite convertible segment at the moment is actually the mid-size segment. And I really have to say, I really like this one here for this new comfort. So it's uh, the, the you know, biggest thing they did actually. I'm really astonished how we could keep the, the fuel consumption that low still here. So somewhat again around 7 liters. Of course, it always depends on the throttle, but some cars, even if you drive them slowly, they are really high in the consumption. <laughs> that's, that's really funny. What about, by the way, the steering feel when you are in those, you know, um, comfort modes? It is very soft, yes, but the good thing is you don't have a dead zone area and I do not like that. For example, we had that with the new 3 series that here in this low degree angles there was no feel and here, I mean, there's play, yes, but you see the car does something when you turn the steering wheel, so I like that. Although I have to say it does not offer you the most natural driving feeling. As for the steering, steering input, not most natural, somewhat a little bit arcade-like, especially if you are in those comfort modes. With the sports mode, it's better than you have a little bit more natural driving input, but not as natural as you might want to have with the purest rotor. Here you hear that exhaust sound, because I'm in the lower gear now, rolling down, and also you know the, the whole sound characteristic is changing. And in the Eco Pro mode again, car shifts up again and is also once more definitely calmer. So I like it that you can use this car 
for different occasions that you have this mode where you can drive it. It's always fun to have, be in a roundabout. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that, that's also the reason why you might go for this car. You can have this sporty driving fun in the corners, but at the same time, you can use it for cruising and just relaxing a little bit. And usually, again, as I said, those small rotors are just for sporty driving fun, not really for comfortable cruising. So, again, I would at the moment think about, would I go for a mid-size convertible, like a C-class C -class convertible is great, or like the Audi A5 convertible. We also had tested the Audi S5 convertible, which was a lot, a lot of fun. So at the moment, I think, convertible-wise, I would decide between, you know, either going like really budget, purest roads are getting an MX-5 or so, but I'm a little bit too tall for that, actually. So I would rather think about this one, yes, Roadster, or then go for mid-size and uh, Audi A5, S5, or the Mercedes C convertible, like a C400 or C43 or something. That would be a lot of fun then. So now we're getting on the motorway with open top. Also belongs here to our test. Wow, we even have six liters to one kilometers as well. Seriously, it's awesome. So now sports mode again. And with open top, some acceleration on the motorway. We're going from 60 kilometers or 37 miles per hour to one kilometers. So that's already 105 or 65 miles per hour. That's quite decent. So now we're on the motorway. Good test. We couldn't do that at the launch in um, Portugal. Now we are at 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour. And I mean, here at 100 kilometers, this gets decently loud uh, already. You might also pick that up on camera. So I have to work against it with the voice. And this is then still a difference to a mid-size convertible. Those mid-size convertibles, they remain relatively silent also on open top at 100 kilometers an hour. If you, oh, by the way, I can go to comfort mode again. So um, those roadsters here are more, so to say, summer convertibles. Although here with the new generation, they already changed that a little bit. So in this new generation, it is less wind in the cabin, especially if you have the windows raised all up, which we do here when we have the camera mounted, of course. Um, so it's better than the previous generation, but I mean, like uh, wind-wise, now like temperature-wise, it's okay. But like the sound it makes and uh, so on, I'm not sure if I would keep up that for hours and hours. Whereas the C-Class convertible or an Audi A5 convertible and so on, I would definitely drive also for a longer time open on the motorway if you keep it at about 100 kilometers an hour. So that's then the difference. The question is, are you driving on the motorway quite often with open top? Then a lot of the mid-size convertibles are your type. If you're more on the countryside and with the lower speeds, then the roads are definitely a thing for you. And of course, at, you know, at any time, you can say, ah, let's close that roof and drive it with closed top. So that's also possible as we shown you earlier. But here, you know, suspension-wise also and comfort-wise as for the seating, again, it's quite astonishing that it's uh, uh, you know, really, really decent as for the seating comfort here also on the motorway and the stability on the motorway at higher speeds is also superb again. This really feels like a go-kart, although it has, it is longer than before, I feel they've made it more agile and that's also quite an achievement, definitely. When you look at the side mirrors, there's also the blind spot monitor, this yellow triangle you can see here. And we can also set the cruise control. We do it here on the steering wheel, right there. And you can also have the adaptive cruise control. So here I set the, the distance to the car in front of me. And then also the distance is being kept. The run of road protection here works in a way that it here counter steers. As soon as I go off, it's not like this proactive system in this case, but that's also fine. And you can see this was quite smoothly done by the car. So I did not do that myself. Awesome job here also by the BMW engineers because what we've recently seen with Mercedes vehicles, how do they do that? They have this run of road protection with braking intervention. So the opposite side, where you know, when you go into the right lane too close or stepping over it, then it's being, you know, brake on the different side. And then you have like a bam. So like a wow, 
explosion reaction and that can be really dangerous, I think. So I think it's better to do it with a steering wheel intervention. So this is about city driving and open top motorway experience here. And now to our conclusion for today with the BMW Z4 Roadster in the new generation. Overall, the styling here, I think it works pretty well. First of all, you might have, you know, had to get used to it. It does not have the same styling as before, especially with the longer rear there. But, you know, I got used to it and I think I really like it meanwhile. Also with the interior pretty clean from the setup, rather conservative overall. Especially for the international markets, they need some more, uh, you know, stepping up in the animal skin alternative. In the US with the sensor tech at the moment, the best option right there. Then from the driving, this is really superb because it has more comfort, definitely more comfort than in the previous generation. That's the biggest step up right here. And it's one of the most comfortable roadsters right now on the market. That's also the main aspect for that. But at the same time, it's super agile in the driving, so much driving fun in different aspects. It works also high speed as we've shown you here on the motorway with a close top. So definitely one of the very good fun machines here at the moment. Four or six cylinder, well, it also depends on the price and if you really need that, if you rather use it for cruising. And also remember, 150 kilograms less here, especially for the four cylinder. So it makes the car a little bit lighter. I really like that. So I would rather go maybe for a purist experience, also keep it low with the specs because even with the four cylinder, when you spec it all full as we have here today, then this one here is even at 68,000 euros. Wow. And the full spec with all options in the M40i was 75. Yeah, so there are still a 7,000 euros difference than in this case with the full spec four cylinder or full spec six cylinder. So you will always save a couple of thousand euros, but you will save even more if you keep it a little bit lower spec. Yeah, if you spend a lot of money anyway, then you can also say already can go for the six cylinder. That works well too. And then you can have even more sound experience and even more acceleration. What about you? Which one would you go for? And please also compare our M40i review. We will link it in the video description and also in the pinned comment. And thank you so much again for tuning in today. Please subscribe and also tell your friends to subscribe. Always a good way to support Autogefuel is to subscribe both of our channels. Subscription links are also in the video description right there and in the pinned comment. And also keep recommending us to everyone because we only rely on word of mouth. We're not a you know, big company or something to say. We just live uh, from our community that you are really joining and supporting us. And that's also you know, what's very important to us. Thank you again, guys, for everything and see you next time.